Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I hope that everybody is having an unbelievable uh, week. I hope that uh, the things you set out to do, you were able to accomplish. And even if you have had some challenges and some difficulties, if you're still breathing, you're still in the fight, don't give up, don't turn around. Remember, no surrender, no retreat. I just want to stop in real briefly and talk to you about something that's immensely important if you're talking about uh, making some significant changes to the life that you're living uh, pursuing some worthwhile and worthy goals uh, with an intent of elevating the level at which you exist in this world. And I think that should be everybody's goal, next level living. I have never reached a point or a platform in my life where I felt, okay, I have arrived. I have been uh, fortunate enough to be persistent enough to achieve some things uh, that most people won't but at no time did i ever look at it and say okay i'm good that is not how i think my goal is to be a better man today than the than i was the day before how do i do that i monitor my thinking i monitor my movement i enrich my existence how do i do that by reading by studying by observing by learning if you don't learn daily you're not progressing, you're not moving, you're not achieving, you're not getting to a point in which you can really truly do things that are considered to be exceptional and extraordinary. And so that's the challenge I want to put in front of you today. Uh, if you wanna change, I believe change starts within. Success is an internal endeavor. It moves inside outward. What you see on the outside had to start on the inside. There had to be some evaluation, some assessment, some changes in thought. Thought is by far the greatest vehicle of change. As a man thinks, so is he. Thoughts are the seeds of your destiny. How you're thinking consistently is mapping out your future. And you may not even see it. And you may be asking yourself why this was. You have to be aware of your thinking, whether you're thinking from uh, a highly spiritual platform, whether you're talking about some of the more traditional uh, religions, it all points to your thinking. Uh, if you talk about Christianity, it says, guard your hearts and minds, one of the most prevalent and consistent commands within the Bible. And then if you talk about specifically what Paul had to offer and contribute, uh, I believe it's 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse three through five. It says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are, carnal, are not carnal, but mighty in God for the pulling down of stronghold, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against what? The knowledge of God bringing what? Every thought into captivity and to the obedience of Christ. If you look down the line, there are nothing but Proverbs that talk about the importance of guarding your thinking, your thoughts. And then if we move into Matthew, uh, Christ tells uh, those who are listening that out of the abundance of the heart, what the mouth speaks. So we know that words carry power, but where do the words come from? They come from the abundance of the heart. What is the abundance of the heart? The subconscious, the thoughts that you entertain daily beneath the surface that you may not be co uh, cognitively, uh, you may not be consciously aware of. And that is important. If you want to change your life, you've got to break the patterns of negative thinking. You've got to consistently interrupt anything that is in diametric opposition to what you have declared and believe and are desiring and fighting for in your life. What you focus on in your life is what you will feel. What you focus on constantly is going to have uh, a massive impact on your thought processes and how you think is going to be a massive influence on how you perform. You, your thoughts are going to uh, determine your beliefs. Your beliefs are gonna determine your actions. Your actions are gonna create habits. How you move habitually is gonna be a direct uh, indicator of where you end up. If you wanna change habitual behavior, you change habitual thinking. 
and you have to control that by what? First of all, purposely monitoring what you think and say. Second of all, guarding your gates against anything that will oppose your new idea of, uh, 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 of existence or thought. You cannot be listening to, watching, or entertaining uh, information and data that is moving against you. You can't have friends around you who are speaking negatively. You can't have someone around you who only has a negative opinion of you, a negative view of you. I'm not saying that you get a bunch of yes people around you. I have never believed in having yes men around me. I never did. Um, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is you have got to have people around you who see the potential in you, who encourage it, who inspire you to move and act on it. Now you do need people who, to hold you accountable, to tell you when you're not doing what, but holding someone accountable, constructive criticism is always that thing that says, hey, you're not doing this or you're not doing that, and you can. In other words, a person who can see your potential can call you on not actualizing it. A person who sees your potential can call you on making wrong moves and poor decisions. But they will always point you to the fact that there's something better in you. They never leave you with thinking, I just can't do it. I'm just not that way. Anyone that tells you you're never going to amount to anything doesn't deserve to be in your circle. Anybody that can only point out all the things you've ever done wrong and not look at your desire for change and see the potential doesn't deserve to be in your circle. It's your responsibility to cultivate this new circle. It's your responsibility to cultivate a new way of living. How do you cultivate it? You constantly engage it. You're constantly speaking it. Not just affirming it, but literally performing what I, uh, I prefer, I, I, I call incantations, the embodiment of what I say. So when I'm speaking into my life things that have not yet manifested, I'm not just saying it, I'm literally embodying it and literally believing at a level that you can see the expression on my face and know that I believe it, that it's there, that I'm speaking it, that I'm embodying it, that it becomes a part of what generates my energy level my vibration and you can see it in the way I move in the way I talk in my facial expressions it's me literally being able to plant myself in something in the future and feel it but that comes from being able to manage my thought processes at a level that puts me in a place to do that you've got to break the poor habits of poor thinking the pattern of poor thinking, the pattern of negative thinking, the pattern of always seeing what can't be done and putting that aside and focusing on what can be done, setting a standard, becoming committed to it and pursuing it with a level of relentlessness that is unstoppable. That's how you achieve. It's not going to be handed to you on a silver platter. It's not going to fall out of the sky. You're going to have to go get it, but you're going to have to have a mindset that facilitates the movement that is necessary for you to do it. That's what I'm here to tell you today. That's what I want to encourage you to do. Look, there are some additional uh, resources there. You know we are doing some unbelievably uh, powerful things at the Visionetics Institute and in some of the other companies uh, that are a part of Rick Wallace Enterprises. Uh, and I'm excited about that. But I, what I want to do is I want to help as many people as possible this year get past the fear of uncertainty, get past the fear of failure, get past the fear of what other people are going to think and say, and to move into a place where you know no matter what's happening. I'm telling you, there are always challenges. You know, People tend to talk about their accomplishments. Nothing wrong with that. I believe that if you put in the work, you should be able to celebrate yourself. I have no problem with that. I'm not a person that walks around, oh my, I wish they shut up. No, celebrate yourself. But here's the thing. Make sure when you are presenting what you have accomplished, that you are transparent enough, not necessarily in great detail, but in honesty and tr in, in truth, that you're honest about the journey that you let people know that in order for you to reach this 
uh, platform of promise, you had to go through a journey of process. That process always precedes promise, that there's always challenges. You know, uh, I have experienced that normally when I'm about to take that next step up, I get hit real hard and pushed back. And it's that point where I am completely committed to the process that I begin to see the wheels turn and me move. No matter how, how slow the wheels turn, no matter how many challenges uh, uh, present themselves, no matter how many perceived obstacles present themselves, the focus is the same. I see what's in front of me. I know what's there. I'm going for it. Whatever I've got to go through, whatever I've got to go over, whatever I've got to go under or around, I'm going to do it, but I will not relent. I will not turn around because my mind has already confirmed that it belongs to me. And that's the way you have to think. You have to develop and cultivate a positive thought process that produces action that is consistent with what you believe. And if you don't have the beliefs, you got to develop the beliefs. Look, I wish you the best. As I always say, look, I'm, I live my life on full. Each and every day I wake up and I live my life on full. I give every day everything I have for that day. Why? Because when I leave this place, I want to die on E. I live on full so that I die on E. That means I'm not going to leave anything undone. I'm not going to leave any potential on the table. I'm not taking any of that to the next stage with me. I'm not, it's not going to the grave. It's not going anywhere or whatever. It's going to be expended in my work, in my passion, in my purpose, in my desires, in my goals, in my love for my wife and my family. It's going to come out in the energy and effort I present each and every day. You got 86,400 seconds in a day. When they're gone, they're gone. You've got to do something with them. That's my challenge to you. Look, I'm going to get out of here. It's great to drop in on you guys. Uh, no matter where you're going to watch this video at, um, there are going to be uh, some links to some resources. Check out the resources. I would love to work with you if you're ready to make some major moves in changing your life and you are seriously committed to it. Reach out to me. Uh, the information should be in there. Uh, the email look average is a default setting don't live life on default activate your potential and achieve what's possible uh, beyond average you have what it takes to achieve greatness but you're gonna have to put in the work that's my call and challenge to you on this day and moving forward have a great day I'm out of here Peace. And then with a little special announcement for those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know, outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group, I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.